identify the pathology so we have an image over here okay let's try to look at the image clearly the left side of the face is affected there is some frown on the forehead so forehead is affected we can see the eyes are twitching eyes are affected the nose is deviated the cheek is deviated and there is a deviation in the lips and the chin okay so all these parts are affected basically the entire left half of the face is affected whereas the right side of the face is unaffected now the options given are uh, hemifacial microsomia benedict syndrome bell's palsy and millard gubler syndrome let's try to break down the options hemifacial microsomia hemi means half okay so hemi means half micro means small somia is face or mouth so if you see in this given image the left half of the face is underdeveloped okay so this is a congenital condition congenital condition where one side of the face is underdeveloped it affects ears and jaws it may involve the eye cheeks and associated nerves now in the given image if you see it doesn't look like a congenital malformation there is no abnormal development so hemifacial microsomia is not possible for this given question the next option is benedict syndrome now benedict syndrome is nothing but it is a neurological condition secondary to specific damage in the midbrain okay so once midbrain is affected due to some trauma it causes ipsilateral oculomotor nerve palsy so sent uh, cranial nerve 3 oculomotor nerve palsy which causes contralateral hemiparalysis so there is partial paralysis on the contralateral side there is lack of coordination of voluntary movements then there is problem with the uh, uh, there is involuntary twitching the movements are all affected there is rest postural and action uh, tremor due to the cerebral damage so there is tremor these tremors are also known as holmes tremor so all these features are seen in benedict syndrome where third nerve palsy is affected here the most common feature is this ocular symptom and the paralysis of the contralateral part so if you see the eyeballs they are not going to meet properly like how you have in normal uh, normal patient so here you don't see any disturbance in the eyes so benedict syndrome is also eliminated the next option is bell's palsy we will come back to that later because that is something that we uh, commonly know bell's palsy is something that we've studied all these years let's come to uh, millard gubler syndrome now millard gubler syndrome also is a clinical uh, syndrome which includes palsy of cranial nerve 6 and 7 so obtusions and facial both uh, nerves are involved it is characterized by ipsilateral paresis of lateral rectus if you remember lr6 so4 so lateral rectus supplied by 6th cranial nerve is affected with this and there this is an upper motor neuron kind of a lesion upper motor neuron lesion and there is contralateral hemiplegia so these are the three features of millard gubler syndrome now here there is again facial paralysis but lateral rectus is affected so okay here also lateral rectus is a little affected in the image so how do we eliminate millard gubler syndrome and bell's palsy now bell's palsy is nothing but a lower motor neuron lesion okay remember this this is lmn and millard gubler is an upper motor neuron lesion if you have to differentiate between an upper motor neuron lesion and a lower motor neuron lesion you have to see the forehead in a lower motor neuron lesion the forehead is also affected 
whereas in an upper motor neuron lesion the eyebrow and the forehead are less likely to be affected therefore the answer to this question is bell's palsy okay so bell's palsy is a lower motor neuron type of paralysis of the facial muscles due to compression of facial nerve in the facial canal near the stylomastoid uh, foramen so these are all the technical details that we need to remember where is the compression happening for facial paralysis the exact etiology is unknown but there is a viral predilection so there is wrinkling on one side inability to close eye overflow of tears on the cheek loss of nasolabial fold drooling of saliva from the angle of the mouth and the face appears to be pulled on the healthy side there is there is a facial asymmetry so these are all the classical features of bell's palsy which can be also identified in this image